Okay. So I should go ahead and share the screen. Okay. All right. Am I? I you see my screen. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yes, perfect. Um, I want to know if the audience are actually here. Oh, can you hear? Let me see. Uh, I'm not sure they can hear. Okay, uh, yeah, sure. I can see somebody just said no. I can't. I, see no, I can't. Okay, perfect. Uh. Hello, I believe you should be able to hear me now. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as somebody just said, we can hear you now. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I think it's yeah on YouTube. I can hear you. On YouTube. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Hi, everyone. Once again, I'm sorry for for that. Um, I really hope the audio is clear now. Is it clear on your end, Mr. Lalikon? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, perfect. I, I think we can go on. Oh, okay, audio is clear. Okay, I think people are saying that already. Yeah, all right. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to today's session. Um, of course, handled by, my name is Stephen Oladele. I'm the lead volunteer for the Potakot School of AI. And I'm so glad to welcome today, and we are so honored, by the way, to welcome today uh, Mr. Olali Kaur Akintonde, who is the technical delivery lead of Data Science Nigeria, as well as the data scientist at um, Data Science Nigeria. Of course, Data Science Nigeria is uh, perhaps the highest impact nonprofit in Africa and one of the best in the world. So, of course, it's a honor to really have him here with us today to come and share his expertise on exploratory data analysis. And uh, I think we shared earlier the interview session we had with him. You get to know more about him and what, what he thinks about 
um, the EDA, and of course, his career path. And probably after this uh, um, session, you can go and um, read the interview session with him again. Um, thank you so much. So I think at this time, let's, without further ado, I think I'll, I'll let him take the stage on explaining, of course, this topic on machine learning. Um, when um, I think when you don't explore data, I guess <laughs> what you do when you don't explore data, yeah. So uh, when, what happens when you do not explore data? I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So um, Mr. Olali Conflis, you can take the stage. Thank you. All right. Um, my check. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. All right. Um, am I? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Clear. Yeah. Hi, Steven, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, so let's go straight down to uh, the business of today. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, good to have you all uh, present. Uh, okay. So I have um, a couple of slides I'll just walk us through. And then we will do some hands-on, you know, um, using Python programming language. Uh, our ID Jupyter Notebook. Okay. So yeah, so the topic for today is machine learning. Uh, what happens when you do not explore your data? And then, um, so I'll start by way of um, introduction. Uh, first of all, Amolale Kwan's rightly uh, introduced. Uh, I lead uh, technical delivery at Data Science Nigeria. And um, just a very brief of what we uh, do at Data Science Nigeria. Well, Data Science Nigeria is a non-profit organization uh, that is uh, on the mission to raise 1 million AI talents in 10 years. And um, so that's what we do. That's what we go to work to do every day. We, we are big on, on, on training. We are big on community, as I know that uh, a number of you would already know about us. And then, of course, we're also a non-profit uh, consulting in the sense that we also offer solutions, you know, to uh, solving both business and um, social uh, problems. So that's just a brief of the organization I work for. So straight to it. Now, one of the most important skills that every data scientist must master is the ability to explore data properly. I mean, I can't overemphasize this because um, it's only through EDA, that is exploratory data analysis, uh, that we are able to uh, derive you know, insight on, and uncover you know, facts about our data before we can go ahead and say we want to build any machine learning model or whatsoever. So straight down to it, what is EDA? Now, simply put, EDA is all about getting to know your data. That is, it's the process of you know, performing initial investigation on data so that you can discover patterns, you can spot anomalies, you can test hypotheses and even check assumptions, you know. Um, and essentially that's what it is, you know. So you, you, when, you when we say EDA, what should come to your mind is getting to know your data. You know, as an analyst, as a machine learning engineer, you are first of all interested in getting to discover, you know, um, patterns, getting to spot anomalies on your data. And essentially, that is what uh, it is. Okay. So can you see my screen? Yes, we can, yes. Yes, we can. Yes, yes. All right. But because the reason I'm asking is on YouTube, it looks like what I have is uh, uh, the the Zoom meeting page. Oh, okay. You want to confirm that on YouTube? Oh, let, let, let me confirm that, please. Because I'm actually sharing the screen. Oh. Okay. Oh, just hold on, please. Um, I is it is not it's not a lag. Uh, please I'm confirm this a lag. Here. Okay. Uh. So it's, it's, it's not coming out. 
Now hold on, please. Let's just make sure it's fine. Is he off now? Because I, I just want to confirm the screen is is up on YouTube so on that YouTube. by the time okay. we want to do the hands on, yeah. But essentially, this part of the of the uh, of the session, I can still take it without the the slide. Okay. Oh, so okay. should I just continue? Yeah, you can continue while we wow. try to figure out. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, um, so let's go on to talk about why skipping exploratory data analysis is a bad idea. You know that is. Trust me. You know, skipping EDA can lead to skewed data. Uh, it can lead to you know outliers and too many missing values in your uh, in your final analysis, and. It therefore means that your outcome is going to be, you know, you know what it is, right? Your outcome definitely won't come out nice. Um, some of the uh, outcomes of not, you know, uh, performing EDA on your data include um, number one, generating inaccurate models. So it means that if you're trying to build a machine learning model, you know, uh, definitely trust me, it means that your model is going to be inaccurate. Why? Because you've not taken out the time to explore the data, to discover patterns, to see the anomalies or whatsoever. Uh, another you know, outcome of not exploring your data would be that you are going to generate, you know, um, data, you're going to generate models that you know are built on wrong data. And I mean there's no gain saying about this. Then another thing is you are likely to choose the wrong variables for the model. You know, if you don't explore your data. So basically, I would say we have about four objectives when we're trying to um, explore our data. Number one being, you are able to describe the data sets. You know, by the time we go into the hands-on, hopefully the screen will be live by then. We'll be able to go through, you know, uh, describing our data. So the first thing is, you are able to quickly describe the data sets. That is, you know, how many rows and columns do you have? Do you have missing data? What are the data types and the preview available? The second objective is that you're able to you know, clean corrupt data. You know, in other words, you're able to handle the missing data. You are able to um, you know, um, handle the invalid data types and also handle the incorrect values. Then thirdly is um, you're able to visualize the data distribution. And I tell you, this is key. And we're going to explore this more when we go into the hands-on session where using our charts, like bar charts, like histogram, like box plots, we're able to check what is the distribution of the, of the data line. Then last but not the least is the fact that um, you're able to also calculate and visualize correlation. You're able to check for relationships between your variables. And uh, one chart that we'll be using to explore correlation here will be our eat map. All right, so um, so let's quickly talk about some of the steps, you know, to data exploration and preparation. Okay, thank you. Sir. Now, please remember that the quality of your input will decide the quality of your output. You know, in computer science, we say garbage in, garbage out, right? So once you have, you, you've got your business hypothesis ready, it makes sense to spend lots of time and effort, you know, to explore your data. Now, personally, from my own experience, I realized that data exploration, uh, data cleaning, you know, data preparation can take up to 70% of your time on any given data analysis project. You know, so it means that you have you have to just spend time on it, you know, to, to ensure that your data is good and ready for modeling. Now I'm going to just talk through um, about five steps, you know, five steps, number one being a variable identification. Uh, we we'll talk about univariate analysis. We we'll talk about bivariate analysis. We we'll talk about missing value treatment, and at the same time, we we'll talk about how do we treat outliers? How do we treat outliers? So straight down to it. Okay, uh, fantastic. My my screen is live on YouTube now. Okay, so let's go straight into it. Uh, variable identification. 
variable identification. Yes. Yes. Now, yes. as a data scientist, as a data analyst, as a case may be, or anybody who is Thank trying you. to explore data, you know, one of the first thing you want to do is to identify your variables. That is, first of all, if you're um, doing a supervised, if you want to build a supervised machine learning, first of all, you are interested in identifying the predictor, that is the input variables. And then you also want to identify the target variables. Uh, then next, identify the data type and the category of your variables. So uh, I have an example here. We just talked through, okay. So we just talked through, um, so suppose we want to predict whether the student, a student will play cricket or not, just like we have it on this data. Here, you need to identify the predictor it's variable, right. the target variable, the data type of right. variables, and category of variables. On that variable you know, identification, I'll say that again, you are interested in doing about four things. The first one being identify the predictor variables. Second is identify your target variables. Also identify the data type and then the category of your variables. We are going to explore this in the hands-on section. So uh, looking at this table I have here, uh, you would see that under the predictor variables, I have gender, I have previous exam marks, I have the height, I have the weight. Those are the predictor variables. So those are the variables, you know, that will, you know, predict our target variable. Then we also have the target variable, which is of course the play cricket, you know. Uh, the second one is data type, right? So let's talk about the data type here. Essentially we have two data types here. We have the character, you know, uh, or let's say string, and we also have the numeric data type. So under the char character, you can see we have the student's ID uh, and the gender, those are the character. And then we have the numeric, you know, which are uh, the play cricket, previous, the height and the weight. Then also we have the categorical, which is variable category. Under variable category, we have under categorical, we have the gender and the play cricket. Those are the categorical variables that we have in this data set. Then we have the continuous variables, you know, which are the previous exam, it's continuous, the height, and then the weight. So those are the first things you want to quickly do when we talk about variable identification. Another step, the second step in um, exploratory data analysis is a uh, univariate analysis, right? Univariate analysis where we say, okay, at this stage, we want to explore variables one by one. You know, univariate analysis is also used to highlight missing and multiplier variables on every colon. So you have your data columns, you are interested in exploring each of them, you know, so you can understand, okay, are there outliers here, are there missing values here, and all of that. Now, method to perform univariate analysis will depend on whether the cat variable category, uh, variable type is categorical or continuous. And on that continuous variable, um, we, we need to understand the central tendencies, you know, the, your mean, your median, your mode, you know, and that's what I have here, central tendencies when you're talking about continuous variable. Uh, we also need to understand the measure of dispersion and then the visualization methods. So we're going to talk more about all of these things when we get into um, the hands-on section. So then at the same time, um, so I'm going to just go straight down to bivariate analysis, uh, which is all about finding the relationship between two variables. You know, here we look for association and disassociation between variables at a predefined significance level. We can perform bivariate analysis for any combination of categorical and continuous um, variable. So on the bivariate uh, analysis, I will quickly talk through uh, the continuous and continuous variables. So Given that you have, you know, um, continuous variables, you are literally interested in using, you know, a scatter plot, just like we have here, a scatter plot. Now, it is a very good way. A scatter plot is a very good way to find out the relationship between two variables. You know, the pattern of scatter plot indicates the relationship between them. The relationship can be linear or non-linear, just like we have it here. When your scatter plot, like we have here. Um, is pointing to the right. It means that you have a positive correlation. You know, when you have something like this, it means that you have a moderate positive correlation. This here, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Okay, so this here shows that there is no correlation. 
you have a moderate negative correlation here, you have a strong negative correlation here, and you have a covilinear uh, relationship here. So using um, this scatter plot, you are able to quickly explore two variables to see their relationship and know the kind of relationship that exists you know, on the data. So straight down to it, uh, let's talk about uh, how do we handle missing value, missing value, right? So missing values in the training data set can reduce the power and fit of a model or can lead to a biased model because we have, we have not analyzed the behavior relationship with other variable correctly. Now, essentially missing values, you know, oftentimes in, in real, you know, we real world scenarios, you always see missing values in your data, right? And that's what we have here. Now, in this scenario here, that is this left um, scenario, we've not treated the values. Now, the inference from this data set is that the chance of playing cricket, right? If you check here, chance of playing cricket by male is higher than female. Look at this. Male is higher than female. That's the inference. On the other hand, if you look at this table, it, this table shows us that, you know, after treatment of the missing value, we can see that female have higher chances of playing cricket compared to male, as we have it a female three and the male two. You know, so just imagine we've built a model on this kind of uh, data. It means that at the end of the day, you know, our data will surely not give us the right model. So this is just the case in point for us to understand. Another way of handling, so how do we handle missing values? We handle them by deletion and delete. Um, we have the list-wise deletion, and the, we also have the pair-wise deletion um, of, of you know, handling missing values. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm, I'm gonna go straight again to uh, missing value treatment. You know, aside from deletion, right? Uh, it's important I note something here that deletion method are used when the nature of missing data is missing completely at random. Else, non-random missing values can bias the model output. So it means that you only want to delete missing value when you know you have uh, you know when your data that is missing are completely at random. That is when your data missing value data here are at random. Then you want to you know be able to, to delete. So let's go straight to the second method um, because I want us to do some hands-on, so I'll have to rush here. Uh, another way of handling missing value you know, using central tendency. So you have your mean mode and um, a median imputation. So you can use this also to handle missing values. Uh, so after dealing with the missing value, the next task is to deal you know, with outliers. Now, often we tend to neglect outliers while building models. Uh, this is a discouraging practice. Uh, outliers tend to make your data skewed and reduce accuracy. So let's learn about how to handle outliers. Um, so like we have here, outliers is commonly used terminology by analysts and data scientists, and it needs close attention else. It can result in widely wrong estimation. So looking at this diagram here, um, this shows us the distribution of our data, and then we have some outliers at this point. Uh, by the time we get into the hands-on, I'll show you how the outlier works, and then we would all handle it together. So what are the impacts of outliers on our data sets? Um, essentially, uh, you know, I listed about four of them. Number one is that it increases the error variance and reduce the power of statistical tests. Uh, second is that if the outliers are non-randomly distributed, they can decrease normality. Uh, another point here is they can bias or influence estimates that may be of substantive interest. Uh, and then the last point here is that they can also impact the basic assumption of regression and over another statistical model, um, model assumptions. Then finally, um, on this slide, uh, how do we detect outlier? Most commonly used method for detecting outlier is visualization. And we are going to see that shortly as we proceed into uh, seeing the hands-on you know. um, So how to remove outliers? Most of the way to deal with outliers are similar to the method of missing value, which includes deleting the observation, uh, transforming them, buying them, treating them as a separate group, uh, imputing values and other statistical mode methods. So guys, let's quickly go into my Python script and then we would um, quickly run through the process of dealing with um, 
uh, exploratory analysis together. Um, let me confirm we can see my new screen. Can, can we see my Jupyter notebook? Um, no, no, not, no, 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 uh, no, we can. not uh, Yeah. Okay. So let me see. Um, so I'm just going to put this up and. Oh, yes. Okay. So can you see it now? Yes, we can now. Yes. Oh, okay. Brilliant. Okay. So straight down to it. Um, Okay, so, so here is um, some, this is just for us to do some hands on. Um, what are the steps in exploratory data, ana, you know, data analysis in Python? Now, there are many steps for conducting EDA. Uh, I, I want to discuss regarding um, just about four steps. I'm going to be talking about uh, describing your data. I'm going to be talking about how do you handle missing data? How do you handle outliers? And then how do you understand relationship and discover new insight using plots? So I want to believe that the audience is a bit familiar with uh, some Python. If otherwise, um, I will also take some time to explain one or two things for us. Now, the first thing is um, to load our data, we're going to start by importing pandas. Um, so let's do that. So I'm going to say import pandas as PD, right? So this is also import pandas. By the way, Pandas is a Python programming. Uh, a Python is a library in Python uh, that is used specifically for uh, data analysis. So I've imported these as PD, so I run that. Now there's a data set I want us to use. Um, I believe that um, I'm gonna make this file available to the organizer so that it can as well share with um, the participants. So straight down to it, right? Um, so Let's import the boosting data set. Now, the boosting data set is a common, um, let me see that. OK, so let me zoom into it. OK, sorry, let me zoom into it so that we can now see. OK. Um, is it bold enough? Can you see my Jupyter notebook? Okay, I think some participants can't see it just yet. Oh, it, okay. it's fine, yes. Okay, all right, cool. Thank you. So yeah, so let's import our data set. Um, so I'm going to say from sklearn the data sets, uh, import uh, load, underscore boosting. Now this is a data set that comes with, um, you know, when you install um, your Python using Anaconda, you know, you always have this. So, so I've just done that. Now what I need to do here is, just like I said here, assign the boosting data set to a variable called boosting. So let's do that, boosting. So this is just me loading my data set. Uh, so, uh, so let's see that. Then next thing I want to do is to assign the predicting variable to a variable X. So I'm just going to do this boosting dot data. And then my Y variable, which is a target variable, I'm going to assign that, sorry, I'm going to assign that to boosting dot um, feature underscore names. Oh, sorry, please. Um, boosting dot targets. So there's so I've got targets. So I run that and then, so basically what I'm doing here is just me, you know, loading the data from Anaconda. So uh, so let's go on to say that colon, that the assigned feature name to colon. So I'm gonna say colon, columns equals to boosting dot feature, right? Underscore names. So the, the names of the features are currently um, stored in this expression here, posting the feature underscore name. So I'm assigning that to columns. So the next thing I want to do is to just explore the column names. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Ladikon. Sorry. Please, can, yes, you, can you zoom in further? I think for mobile experience users. Oh, for mobile okay. users, yes. I think, I think that, that should do. That should do. Yeah. 
Thank you. Is it better? I, okay. Yeah, it should be better. Right? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So the next thing I want to do now is so let me just explore my column names. Let me see. The names. So columns. So oh. I just call columns, you know, that variable and do shift enter. So now I can see the columns that are that currently exist in my data sets. So straight down to it, uh, let's go ahead and create a data frame. So I'm going to just create a data frame and assign it. Um, I think because I'm zoomed. This is, so I'm going to have a boosting. Let's create this variable called boosting DF. So this variable will hold. So we have PD that is pandas dot uh, data frame. You can tab it X. So what I'm saying here is I'm assigning the predicting variables that I've stored in X. I'm assigning all of them as I'm creating it. I'm creating a data frame for them and then assigning to boosting underscore DF. Right, so essentially that's what I've just done. So I do shift enter to run that line of code. And then the next thing I wanna do now is, um, so let's, this guy currently, if I explore this guy, so let me just, let me do something here. Um, okay, so just need to zoom. So I need to set the feature name as a column name because if I explore, okay, I was trying to, let me create something here. Now, please check this out. If I if I do this, boosting underscore df dot head, see what I have. This data set, this data frame doesn't have column names. So, but the column names exist. So, what I just want to do here is to set the feature names as a column name. So, and to do that, what I just need to do is boosting, um, boosting underscore df right dot columns right equals to columns now guys if i explore this guy again see what will happen now this guy has column names so so let's go straight to um, describing the data in python right uh in pandas we have uh the describe you can see here, we have a function called describe. I'm gonna do basically here would be for me to just have a boosting. I'm sorry because I'm, you know, I zoomed in so much. So this guy is moving all around the screen. Boosting underscore df, right, dot describe. This is the first step in my exploration of this data. I want to describe the data. So I run this guy and then instantly pandas gives me a description of my data. It gives me the counts. It gives me the mean standard deviation. It gives me the maximum value for each of the columns, right? For each of the columns, I can see what it looks like now. Now, essentially, um, the next thing I would do is, so let me also check the, um, now, just by looking at this, guys, you discover that this data for one doesn't seem to have missing variables sorry, missing data. There's no missing data here. But what I'm going to do is, I'm still going to at least use this as an example of handling missing data. So let's go straight down to it. So first thing I want to do is to inspect the shape um, because I've zoomed, so this guy is moving all around. So I'm going to inspect, uh, it's moving all around. Sorry, is my screen? Good enough. Can you see it? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. So, uh, both score df dot ship. So I'm having this challenge because I'm zoomed the lot. So, so this is just to inspect the shape of my data. So this shows me essentially that I have uh 506 rows and then 13 columns in my data. So the next thing I want to do, let's assume that I have no values, no values, right? So what I'll just do is I can create, uh, so I have boosting underscore DF, that is my data frame, this is my data frame, equals to my data frame again, boosting underscore DF dot drop any. Now this function called drop any is what we use to drop the data, you know, to drop the uh, the null or otherwise put the missing, 
you know, data. So I haven't done this. So what I'm technically doing here is I'm now assigning it back to uh, posting on that for here, which is my data frame. And of course, what do you expect? Because we don't have any missing data. If I try to inspect the shape again, um, I'm still going to have uh, posting underscore df dot shape. I will still have the same shape. You know, I still have the same shape. So let's assume that we have. Uh, how do we feel? So I don't want to drop any values. Let's say we want to fill any values, right? Almost the same thing goes. What I'll do here is, so I'm just going to cite an instance of filling uh, any values on the age column. So I have my boosting underscore DF. Now in Python, uh, if I want to refer to a particular column, you know, what I'll do is on a data frame, I'll have the data frame, then I have these square brackets. Then I put the name of the, um, variable that I'm interest, interested in, which in this case is age, uh, equals to, so let's say boosting data frame, right? Then I have age. So technically what I want to do now is I want to fill the missing value. So fill NA, sorry, fill NA with 30. In other words, what this line of code is saying is that I want to fill the missing values on the colon called age, I want to fill them with 30. So anywhere where there's missing value, it's going to fill it with 30. I click on shift enter to run that code and that is done. If I try to explore this shape again, of course, it's still going to be the same thing. So let's move very quickly. Um, if, if you have questions, you can be dropping the questions to attend to them. Uh, so next, here, let's talk about handling outliers. Remember on the slide, I talk about how do we handle outliers. So very quickly, um, I'm going to talk about how to handle outliers. Now, the library that I'm going to be using here, I'm going to be using Seaborn. Now, Seaborn is another very interesting uh, data visualization library in Python. So to import Seaborn, I have import Seaborn. You know, I'm going to import it as SNS. Right, so I'm going to just run this. Now, what I want to do basically here is I'm going to explore the DIS colon on a box plot. So let's see what that will look like. Now, SNS dot box plot. So this SNS, right? Um, where my X. By the way, if you're using Jupyter Notebook, when you uh, click on Shift Tab, can give you some suggestion as to what you can do you know, with this particular function. So what I just need to do is x equals to uh, boosting, right? Boosting, because I'm interested in DIS colon, I do DIS. So essentially what this line of code refers to is, I'm, try I'm trying to, you know, plot a box plot using the DIS colon of the boosting uh, data frame. I hope that is clear. So when I run this guy, see what we have. Um, Sibon has shown us that, oh, look at this. There are some outliers. There are some outliers. That's what Sibon has easily, um, has easily showed us at this point. So moving quickly uh, down, uh, the next thing I would be interested in doing is so also check at scatter plots. Remember earlier we talked about scatter plots. So what I'm going to be using at this point is another fantastic uh, visualization library in Python, uh, which we call the scatter plot. So guys, see this. So I always like to format my plots. So what I'm just going to do is, you know, have this line of code, uh, plt dot uh, support because I want to have some supports. Then I'll have fixed size, uh, fixed size, right? Equals 
So this is just me formatting my out, outline that is a fake area. Then the next thing I want to do now is define which colon should go to the X and Y axis. So I'm going to have AX. Um, so AX dot scatter. So I have boosting, my boosting DF. So on the X axis, I want uh, the colon called indos. The colon called indos. Then comma. On the Y axis, I want the colon called tax, right? Called tax. So I'm going to have this and the tax. Then I want to set the X label. That is, I want to give my X axis and my axis some label. So what I'm going to do now is, um, so I have AX, right? AX dot set label. So that sets underscore X label. So I'm just going to call this guy, uh, let me just call it proportion. So I have a name to call it proportion of non retail business. Uh, let me just call it proportion of non retail acres. Because remember, we are talking about boosting housing data set, you know, boosting our housing data set. So uh, the next thing I want to, so I'm just going to give this name, you know, or oh, you know what, guys, let's just give it a cup of town, just to make it easy for everybody. Then X, uh, Y label, I'm going to call it AX dots, AX dots um, set underscore Y label, underscore Y label. Then I'm just going to give this label a name. Um, let me just call it dollars, you know, because this is the price that is tax. Then I haven't done all of this. The next thing I want to do is to just do plt.show to show my vision. So when I run this guy, let's see what we have. So guys, see what we have here. This is a scatter plot that shows us uh, the relationship between our acre per town and then the tax that is being paid. So um, essentially we can, if you are to go for that to just explain what we have here, you would see that essentially we have you know, a, a very a, a large concentration of uh, data around this area. That is, in terms of tax below $500, for instance, and then a cap a town, you know, under, under 10. You can see the concentration of data that we have here. And then we, of course, we have some outliers. You know, so essentially what we are doing here is exploring the data using scatterplot instance and then we can easily see what exactly is going on on our data so i'm going to just move down to uh, understanding relationships and new insight through plots and um, what i'm just going to be doing here is i'm going to be talking about histogram and heat maps now histogram is a great tool for quickly assessing a probability distribution you know that is easy for interpretation by almost any audience and then Python, of course, offers us a handful of different options for building and plotting histograms. So let's just go straight to it. Like we always do, um, we want to, let's format the plot. So I'm going to say PLT. Remember when I say PLT here, what I'm referring to is that library that we imported earlier on, which is this matplotlib.pyplot, right? Matplotlib.pyplot uh, dot figure. So I have a figure. So I'm going to say fixed size. You know, let me just give this guy a fixed size of let's say um, 16 by 8. And then for the histogram, what I need to do is PLT. I'm going to call the east. You know, so in pyplot, uh, in matplotlib, to use histogram, what I need to do is plt dot east. Then if I do a shift tab, this guy will tell me some things I can do here. So basically what I'm going to do here is for the data that I'm interested in, which is, uh, uh, let's just use the boosting dot target, right? Boosting dot target, which is what I've imported here. Let me go back up 
just a moment. Boosting the target. So I can, I just say, why? That is what I'm trying to do here is I want to plot an histogram for the target variable Y, right? And then, of course, let's just give a quick label. So plt.x label. Uh, sorry, can you still hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Hello? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, okay thank you. Um, sorry, so let's just give... Sorry, this. there's a question. I don't know if that should be answered after your session. Yeah, okay. I think I should just answer all the questions afterwards. Oh, okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay, so... So all the questions, please just drop them in the chat forum because I can't see the chats now. Um, so I'll just come over to answer all the questions one after the other. All right, so let's just call this um, X label price in dollars. And then for the Y axis, um, I'm just gonna call plt.y label. Um, and then I'm going to just say count, right? So essentially what I need to do now, so let me just give it a tight layout. So in PyPlot, we also have what we call a tight layout that just help to ensure that our visual is clean enough. So when I run this by using Shift Enter, all right, guys, see what we have here? So basically what we have here is our plotted, so this plot, this histogram describes our target variable. That is the price of boosting houses, right? And then you would see that most of the houses, the price is highest around. Uh, so most of the, um, so we have about over 140 records that have prices just around twenty thousand dollars. You know, so this is just we, you know, also exploring our data. Then the last part, just before we start taking all the questions, uh, is also we can discover relationship using heat maps using heat maps now the heat map you know procedure shows the distribution of a quantitative variable over all combination of two categorical features you know so essentially what i'm going to be doing now is uh, so let's create a correlation matrix so to do that i'm just going to say call underscore mat that is i'm creating a variable and i'm going to assign um the correlation on the boosting df you know that is what we're trying to say here is, so all the variables that we have on the Boston DF, which let me just, let's, let's see this together. So let's see this together. So let's say um, Boston underscore DF dot head. Now remember, head is just was to show the first, um, let's say the first two, let's say the first three uh, records. So what I want to do essentially is I want to see the correlation that is the relationship between all of these variables using an heat map. So let's see that equals um, boosting underscore df dot correlation, right? I'm just gonna round up this two. So let me just round it. That is, if I don't, okay. If I don't round it up, uh, when I show the labels, we can see something like 0 0.77777 something. So I'm just going to do round it to two decimal places. Now let's use the Stibon. Um, so if I'm to just show what we have here, guys, let's show what we have here. Call on the score marks. See what we have here. This is the correlation. This guy shows us the correlation among all the variables in our predicting um in our x on our x axis you know or better put this guy shows us the correlation between all the variables in boosting underscore df right so see you know these guys but just looking at this doesn't make all the sense so i'm going to use an heat map for us to better visualize it so to use an heat map what i'll do is um i'm going to use cbon cns dot heat map uh, so I have data equals to correlation on that score math. That is this guy is the data that I want to show. Sorry, is the data I want to show. 
So let's let's run this. Let's see what we have. And see what we have, guys. So essentially, this data is what we have plotted here, right? That shows us the relationship between, you know, um, all the variables. So relationship between, for instance, CRIM and CRIM, as we'd expect, is one. You know, uh, relationship between uh, CRIM and then a PTRTO, for instance, is, is um, okay, guys. So let we can even annotate. So let's just annotate this guy. Uh, so let's annotate. Annotes equals true, so that we can be able to see some of these things. Um, so let me just do one. Okay, so look at this annotation. So basic annotation just shows us a relationship between, for instance, um, indust and then tax is 0 0.7. So with this heat map, you know, instantly we are able to understand what the relationship between all the variables look like in terms of what the correlation looks like. You know, and essentially this is just uh, some very basic way of handling, um, you know, of handling exploratory data analysis using uh, Python. So uh, I think at this point, we can just quickly take some questions. So we can take some questions so that um, I can be sure that we're on the, on the same page. Yes, um, thank you so much. I think there's a question, which is of course the last one on the chat uh, from Gloria Okafor. Um, can you see that please? Okay. Okay, so this yeah. this is um how do you, would you explore? Okay, how would you approach exploring a very complex data, say a table containing action, different customer pattern on the side? For for example, you have a table with the customer ID, action perform and date. Okay, so essentially it's the same process. Um, so you have this kind of data. The first thing you want to do is, of course, you need to import your data. Uh, let's say, for instance, your data is in CSV. So, under loading the data sets, if we are, so, um, unfortunately, I don't have any data in CSV now, but look at what I'll just do. Um, I can say, so let's say data sets. So, data sets. So, let's say data set equals to, if it's a CSV, I can say pd.read underscore CSV. You know, on the score so then I can import my data set. So let's assume I've imported, you know, the data that Laura is talking about. So what I need to do is first of all, I want to, you know, um, explore what the data looks like. So and I can do that by um, using head, that is calling the head function on the data, right? And then that just shows you what the data looks like. Then the next step I want to take is describe the data. That is, let's see what the data looks like in terms of it count, the mean, the standard deviation, and all that. Python is going to do this for you effortlessly, you know. And by the time you do all of this, you can have, you know, plot your histogram. So remember, you know, um, you plot your histogram, you know, see the distribution using uh, um, something like a scatter plot. You know, by so doing, literally what you are doing is you are exploring your data. You know, you are exploring your data using Python. So essentially, that is what it is um, at uh, Gloria. OK, so any other question? OK, I, I don't think so. Right? Uh, any other questions, um, attendees? Yeah. OK. So yes, this notebook will be made available so that um, I've also tried to ensure that um, I have a very comprehensive write-up uh, for this. So I'm gonna share this notebook and I'm going to also share um, the, the slides so that you know for our own personal study, we can also do that at home. I think there's a new question. Okay, somebody just, yeah, yeah I can see a new question. So okay. please, can you explain how we can use the correlation coefficient to pick variables we can use in building our model? Okay, that's a very fantastic question. So let's move down to it. 
So essentially what this correlation um, matrix shows us, you know, is it just helps us to understand what the relationship among the variables are, right? That's essentially what it is, you know. Um, so to answer the question, uh, using this to speak, you know, uh, to, to building our model, then the answer would be that when you realize that there are certain variables, so take for instance, um, I have, so any point where I have C, you know, uh, the variable, so let's say CRIM, CRIM, this shows us that the relationship between this is one. And of course you expect that because essentially we are comparing the same variable. Now, if I want to make a choice of which one should I use to build my model, just by using a correlation uh, matrix, it won't answer that question for me. Right? So that won't answer the question for me. So the purpose of using a correlation matrix at this point is just to understand the relationship among the variables. You know, to just say, okay, so is there a strong is there a stronger relationship between, take for instance, uh, industry and tax? Uh, so let's see the relation between industry. Uh, where's industry? So industry and then tax, 0 0.7. So this shows us that there's a positive relationship between these two variables. Um, if you look at industry and DIS, it shows us a negative correlation. This guy is just literally showing us, you know, kind of relationship that exists. It doesn't necessarily, uh, it would not necessarily inform the choice of the model that we would use, you know, and it will not necessarily also inform, you know, um, which variables that we pick for our models. No, it won't necessarily inform that. All right, I hope that answers the question. Um, I think that's any other question, everybody. Salali, I think they can reach you on Twitter if they maybe have something else afterwards. Absolutely. Yeah, all right, perfect. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think there are no other questions. So, um, so if you're listening to this um, right after the right after the live stream. We'll try to make sure that the link to the slides and the notebook um, are available on uh, in the YouTube description for this video. So you could probably check back on this channel on this particular video before the the end of the um, before the end of the day. Hopefully, we'll figure out something. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Lalikon. I think so. I really, really appreciate. We really appreciate here. Uh, at the Portaco School here, as well as the general community. Um, I really hope the viewers can say a very big thank you to Mr. Olaliko, of course, the de technical delivery lead and the data science uh, data scientist at Data Science Nigeria. So I love a big thank I love thank you to be rolling in right now from viewers. <laughs> thank Hopefully you. Hopefully anyone is there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. A pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. Take care.